We're here. All right. So, man, now I'm all off kilter. Housekeeping stuff. If you're on Zoom and you don't want to be seen on the public forum of YouTube or Facebook, um, just click off the video and click off the mute thing. Although we love seeing you and hearing you, we want to respect your privacy. Um, on Facebook, make sure that you comment that you're watching live or catching the replay. This month we're doing um, double points for watching the replay because we know with holiday stuff and everybody's got meetings and events and concerts and whatever is going on in your life, wrapping presents, um, baking, uh, we want to be respectful of that so you can't always catch us live. So we're doing two points for watching live and two points for doing the replays for this month. We're also doubling the points for the wheel for sharing and for helpful comments. So if we're talking about an oil and you're like, hey, I use this oil for this, this, and this as well, um, you get a point for that as well. Typically we don't do points for things like that, but this month uh, we are because it's the holiday season and we wanna give gifts. Um, and then sharing, um, you always get a point. This month you're getting two points. So lots of points going all over the place this month. Um, is that it for housekeeping stuff? Comment, I mean, okay, I think that's everything. Who wants to go first this week? Anne, Janelle? <laughs> Awkward silence. <laughs> okay, so this week we're talking about the oils of um, ancient, ancient oils of scripture. Oils of ancient scripture, yeah. Same there thing. you go. Or oils ancient. of the Bible, I've had that class too. <laughs> oils of so we're each going to tackle like one or two, and this will be a multiple week series. So this week, um, the oil that I'm going to be talking about is myrrh. And you probably recognize myrrh just from the biblical story of Jesus's birth. It was one of the gifts that the wise men brought to Jesus. And so myrrh oil, um, it comes from Myrrh basically is like a tree sap that they distill, they steam distill down into an oil. And although it smells very earthy, very earthy, which I'm not a huge fan of, it has a ton of benefits. And so um, one of the primary benefits, there's a lot. Um, some of it is non, not compliant, so I can't really disclose and talk about everything because the FDA didn't like that. Um, but just do, do like a simple Google search for like uses of myrrh essential oil and you'll find some of those things. But the things I can talk about, um, one of the biggest benefits of myrrh is for skin, skin health. And so um, in ancient times, it was one of those like coveted things. Um, it was said to help restore beauty and youth. Um, so you can use it as in like a moisturizing serum for your face. You can use it as like a cuticle rub for your cuticles. Um, yeah, you can use it. In, you can really make anything. It's a, it's a great, same with frankincense, really, really good for your skin. You're just going to smell really earthy. But it's awesome for your skin. So very grounding. That, yes, it's very grounding. Um, it's an oil that's used a lot in like spiritual um, meditation, things of that nature. Um, I also dabbed it around Wyatt's um, umbilical cord after he was born. And so there's that. So there's that <laughs> but um I, yeah i used a little q-tip and just dabbed it around his umbilical cord like the little stump after he was born um another really awesome use of myrrh is it's, it has a lot of purifying properties and a lot of um immune support properties so you can use it you could put um you could do like a mouth gargle with like some water with a couple drops of myrrh and then just kind of like swish it around in your mouth um, for to maintain oral health. Um, you could, I'm trying to think what, are the, what other um, suggestions that they, they gave, but 
a very versatile oil. The other things, uh, as far as immune health, it's great for immune support. Thumbs up there, both if you diffuse it or if you apply it topically. Um, there is there's a blend that has myrrh in it. I'm trying to remember. Is that Egyptian gold? <laughs> Yes, thank you. Egyptian gold has myrrh in it, as well as some other immune support oils. And so um, if you use some Egyptian gold in some rose ointment, use more rose ointment than you do Egyptian gold, though. That was a lesson that I learned. Um, because it does have a few hotter oils in it. And so if you go more oil heavy versus rose ointment heavy, your nose, your nose is going to burn. So don't do that. Um, but you just swipe it underneath your nose during those winter months um, as a way to help support your immune system. Okay. Awesome. Think, did I miss anything, ladies? I think that was the, the biggest things. But again, there are plenty Hi, more. Tim. We saw a cameo of Tim. <laughs> plenty more uses. Um, but some of it I can't really speak to here. So do yourself a little Google search of uses of myrrh essential oil. Awesome. And you're well, I'll go next and then Anne can go and then I'll do the wrap up. So no one has to listen to me for an extended length of time. Uh, <laughs> so I've got, and I clicked the wrong tab. Hang on. So I've got cedarwood tonight and one of the Bible verses that talks about cedarwood, cedarwood is mentioned directly in scripture 21 times and indirectly, I forget, 50 some, I think. Um, but one of the verses that I really liked when I looked it up on Blue Letter Bible, just it's like a study guide thing that you can read along with your Bible. Um, this is Hosea 14, 6, and it says, his shoots will grow, his young shoots will grow, his splendor will be like an olive tree, his fragrance like a cedar of Lebanon. So when I first read that, I was like, oh, clearly that's talking about Jesus, right? That sounds very Jesus-y in how it's being spoken of. And I went back and read the chapter of Hosea. And I love what um, Charles Spurgeon said about this, this chapter. This is a wonderful chapter to be at the end of such a book. I have never expected from such a prickly shrub to gather so fair a flower, so sweet a fruit, but so it is. Where sin is abounded, grace doth much more abound. No chapter in the Bible can be more rich in mercy than this last of Hosea, and yet no chapter in the Bible might, in the natural order of things, have been more terrible in judgment. Where we looked for the blackness of darkness, behold a noontide of light." Charles Spurgeon speaks just like so elegantly. But I was thinking, what a perfect chapter to talk about as we end 2020. Like this has been a really dark year full of really depressing, I mean like a prickly shrub <laughs> and then together so fair a flower or fruit so sweet. Like that, what he said about this chapter really spoke to me. So this verse, although it sounds like it's talking about Jesus, it's actually talking about Israel. Israel was in a time period where it was just not living according to God's word. They were in rebellion. And this is talking about, um, take, take these words with you and return to the Lord. So it's talking about them um, taking away their iniqu iniquity and receiving God's grace. And so... Um, God is then talking about, I will heal, heal their black, their back sliding. And then this, this section, verse six, it's talking about growth being restored. He as in Israel shall grow. Beauty is restored. He shall grow like the lily. Strength is restored, lengthening his roots like the cedars of Lebanon. Value is restored. His beauty shall be like an olive tree. Delight is restored, his fragrance like the trees of Lebanon. Abundance is restored, revived like grain, grow like the vine. Scent shall be like the wine of Lebanon. Like how beautiful of imagery is that? I just thought that was so gorgeous. 
So cedar wood is mentioned with the fragrance and with the strength. And we all know tree oils are very strong. They're very grounding and rooting and uplifting. We've talked about cedar wood multiple times in oily fireside chats. Um, so I love that it has that warm woodsy aroma. It creates a really comforting and yet uplifting environment at the same time. This wood was used to build Solomon's beautiful temple and it's known for its durability. The ancient Egyptians used cedar wood to embalm for perfumery and in their cosmetics. The ancient Greeks used cedar wood oil on bodies as they believed to help one help make one immortal. So how cool is that? That's pretty neat. Um, some of the common uses today, since we don't typically embalm people anymore, I mean it is done in some cultures, but not typically. Um, now you see it a lot in men's aftershave lotions and colognes because it's a very strong masculine scent. Um, so you can try adding a drop to your man's aftershave lotion. Um, you can add it to your favorite skincare products or lotions to help create smoother skin. So add it in with that myrrh. Um, and the frankincense Anna is going to talk about, it's a really, really good skin oil. You can add it to your shampoo and conditioner for shiny or healthier looking hair. Um, and many people find it helpful for restful sleep. Um, Rose has talked about this a lot. It's one of her favorite sleep oils. She loves diffusing cedar wood and lavender. Right now in my diffuser, I've got cedar wood and orange because I didn't want to fall asleep during oily fireside chat. I wanted that orange for a little bit of pick me up. So I've got the grounding and the strength and the confidence as I come to you live, but then I've also got the peppiness of the orange to give me some energy. Um, and then I'm gonna reach you, and going with Janelle's being FDA compliant, I never know where that line is. So I'm going to read quote verbatim from my book, my oils reference Bible, and hope that I'm still within FDA guidelines. If I were just like talking about this, I, I don't know if it would be, but this is straight from the book. I'm reading to you from a textbook, so I think I'm okay, because I think half of you own this book anyways. So throughout history, cedarwood has been used in medicines. We talked about the Egyptians using it for embalming their dead. In China, it was used as a traditional medicine as well as an incense. This oil is known to combat hair loss. It is antibacterial and it is an a lymphatic stimulant. Um, uses, obviously, for hair loss. It can be used for atherosclerosis, ADHD, and many skin problems, including acne and eczema. The fragrant influences, it stimulates the limbic region of the brain. This is the center, the emotions center of your brain. It stimulates the pineal gland, which releases the melatonin, hence why it's really good for sleep. Um, Terry Friedman, he's an MD. He found in clinical tests that this oil may treat ADD and ADHD. These are attention deficit disorders in children. It is recognized for its calming and purifying properties. So that's what the book says on cedarwood. So I think that's just really wonderful. By all means, Google those things. That's a very short synopsis, and what I read to you was very short, um, but Google is gonna be your best friend. Look for reputable sources. Uh, PubMed has a lot of really good medical journals on that, specifically on the Dr. Terry Friedman thing that I was reading to you about. I'm not gonna talk about that anymore, but if you look on PubMed, you'll find some stuff. So, and you're up. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you, ladies, for kind of the introduction um, of some of these oils for um, the oils of ancient scripture. This is, I think this is a really good time of the year to do, to do these, and sometimes, sometimes we forget about these. Um, so my um, oil for tonight is frankincense, which is one of the promos this month. I just want to point that out. Um, you know, Young Living really does it well um towards the end of the year they they really, um, spoil us a little bit and um treat us really well when they announce the promotions for essential rewards or if you're just ordering you know a certain uh, amount for the month sometimes you know sometimes you get some special oils which is really awesome I love free things. Um, in fact, I strategize to get free things all the time. 
Um, so just wanted to kind of highlight a little bit on frankincense. It's known as the king of essential oils and just makes kind of logical sense. I mean, you know, we know from the, the Christmas story that, you know, the three kings, they, they followed the star and found a baby lying in a manger, which was Jesus. And, you know, he's the king of all kings. Um, so this is kind of apropos to, um, you know, they really spoiled him in essence with frankincense and gold and myrrh. And, you know, they, they brought their finest things um, to him. And um, even though Janelle doesn't like woodsy scents, <laughs> this is yet another one that's a little woodsy. Um, but it's warm. It's got a warm um, balsamic aroma. Um, good for grounding and purpose. Like it really kind of gets you focused on what's, what your task is, which I think is really kind of cool. Um, again, just jumping off of what Janelle and Tessa have already mentioned that, you know, all three of these oils are really, 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 really good for the skin. Um, skin health is very important, especially during the winter months, because as we know, our skin tends to dry out. Um, so these are just wonderful oils to help to, you know, bring some, I don't know, health and some radiance to our skin um, that we don't always get because we're not getting a whole lot of um, natural sunlight um, like we do the rest of the year. But I also wanted to kind of give a, a little bit of a background of, for a frankincense. And again, this is coming from the same book. <laughs> um, I don't know where I'd be without this book. Um, but it's, it's also, it's considered the holy anointing oil um, in the Middle East and has been used in religious ceremonies for thousands of years which makes sense. Uh, go way, way back to Jesus's birth. That's thousands of years ago. Um, it is well known during the time of Christ for its anointing and healing powers. It was one of the gifts given to Christ at his birth. Um, and it was used to treat every conceivable ill known to man at that point in time. So, I mean, just think about that. Wow. Like it could be used for everything. Um, and it was actually valued more than gold during the ancient times, and only those with great wealth and abundance possessed it. Um, so it wasn't like everybody had this frankincense oil. Um, it's good for, you know, boosting the immune system. Um, again, it's good for the skin. Um, you know, I'm even kind of thinking, okay, so how can I rephrase this to make it FDA compliant? So we might just move on. Um, it's good for the respiratory system. Um, it increases spiritual awareness, promotes uh, meditation, improves your attitude. So again, that focus thing, you know, so say you're feeling a little sluggish, well, plop some frankincense and maybe some orange or lemon in your diffuser and bada bing, bada boom, you're good to go. Um, that's what I, I really like frankincense for the for the mere fact that it's not, um, it's not just a flowery scent. Um, in fact, most often if I'm diffusing it, you know, the guys really kind of like frankincense. And I don't know if it's just because it's a woodsy scent or not, but um, I, I really like it. I think it's just something different. And um, so I like the woodsy scents. <laughs> Janelle does not. <laughs> so, so I don't know. <laughs> um, anything else here? Um, again, you can, you know, put it in your diffuser. You can apply it to your skin. Um, you know, it's gonna, it's just gonna bring out some youthfulness in your skin. Um, and yeah, so there you go. There's frankincense in a nutshell. Can I just add one more thing? Sure a lot is, okay, why is frankincense so expensive? Um, I think a big bottle is like 90 something dollar, dollars, um, 15 ml, so there's 250 drops. I think a smaller one is five ml, so it's like 40 something. So 
in order to distill frankincense, so it comes from a specific kind of tree. I'm blanking on the name right now, but basically the process to distill it, you have to tap the tree, then the sap runs out, it's in the form of a resin. The resin has to be then distilled and steamed and what there's a lot of work it's like a two-day process to get it so that they can actually distill it into the essential oil same thing with myrrh so myrrh is one of the more pricey oils too you're paying for the work that's put into it and um because young living um abides by such high standards when they do all the cultivate cultivating and distilling and all that process they're not taking any shortcuts and so um that's why it's so expensive and why it's so awesome that at a you know if you place a 300 dollar order 300 pv technically okay most items are one pv equals one dollar 300 pv order this month you get a free frankincense and when you consider like okay that one bottle of oil is worth like 90 bucks all right, plus a little personal diffuser, plus two other oils. 78.50, I looked it up. 98.50, okay. 78, 78.50, so, oh, <laughs> and you were like, wait, is it really that expensive? <laughs> Retail Maybe. price, it's 103.29. So if you're, if you're not a member, it's very expensive, but. Sacred frankincense, uh, is that Sure, I'll look it up. Also, frankincense, I looked that up. You can still buy the resin and the resin burner, so. You can. But I guess my the whole point in that is um, when you're considering, you know, like how much an oil is, also consider what kind of work is going into it. And the fact that they're giving it to us for free is pretty sweet. Um, the sacred frankincense is the one you're thinking of. That's ninety six twenty five for the fifteen ml. And the only difference between the sacred 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 frankincense and the frankincense is it's just a different. It's the same tree, but a different species. Something. I don't even know if I'm saying that, but it's two different um, of that same. Yep. Yeah, the regular frankincense is the Boswella. Okay. Yep. And, this and then the sacred is um, Boswella Farina. There you go. <laughs> ah, Latin. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> it's so great. You know, as we're talking about frankincense, and we've talked about frankincense a, a decent amount during Oily Fireside Chats, I'm just realizing I don't think I've ever taken frankincense internally. Like, I use it all the time for skin stuff, and I diffuse it all the time, but I'm like, huh, frankincense vitality. I, do, I don't think I've, I don't think I've actually ever done frankincense internally. Have either of you? I know it's really good for immune health, <laughs> but I always do thieves. <laughs> thieves is my go-to for immune. Yeah, mine too. Yeah, I never even, and I even have some frankincense vitality. <laughs> we, uh, we may need to do some self-trial and error and education and then come back to the rest of you. <laughs> See, none of us are, we're, we're not perfect. We're still on our oil journeys too. We're learning as we go. <laughs> oh my word, that's hilarious. Huh, new challenge for me this month. Okay, um, so we wanted to do, oh, let me check comments. Does anyone have any questions? Somebody laughed, at, Emily laughed at us for some comment we made. I'll have to go back and see what that was about. Um, okay, I don't see any questions that anybody has. So we'll do the prize wheel. We've got everyone from last week. We've got double entries for everyone watching live. Let me pull up screen share. Okay, can everybody see it? Yeah? Okay, excellent. And spin. Congrats. 
dad. All right, and then we wanted to do a motivational quote for the week. Anne or Janelle, did either of you have one you wanted to share? Otherwise, I've got one. All right, okay. If I can find it in all my tabs. Okay, so I really like this one. Make your life a masterpiece. Imagine no limitations on what you can be, have, or do. I just think that's really, really cool because so often we look at things like, I don't have skills for this, or I don't have money for this, or I don't have time for that. And like, those are reasonable things to be concerned about. And, and you need to set for yourself reasonable expectations. I have a tendency to write a to-do list as long as my arm and with a toddler and a preschooler, I never finish. But the, the making your life a masterpiece, it's not just today. It's not just this week. And thank the Lord, it's not just this year. Like, it's, it's the masterpiece overall. So, like, imagine, you know, like, the, if you've read through Proverbs 31, there's this, there's this picture of a woman who does all of these things. And I used to get really discouraged. Like, how can one person at one time make clothing for her family and get up before dawn and make all this food for her family and her servants? And how can she do the vineyard and supply the merchants with stuff and plant and, and she has no fear of snow for her household. So all of her outside yard work is done. Like how can somebody do all of that? And then I was like, Oh wait, hang on. There's multiple seasons mentioned. Like this wasn't a one day screenshot of this woman's life. This is like at least one year, if not multiple years of her life shown to you. Like this is, this is a masterpiece painting of a godly woman. So I, I really love that quote, make your life a masterpiece. Imagine no limitations on what you can be, have, or do. So look at your life as a whole and think of what in my lifetime can I accomplish? What in my lifetime can I achieve or give to people or imagine or share with others or that kind of a thing? I think that's a really nice when you're having a bad day, just it's it's one dot on a masterpiece and it's going to be beautiful. And you need the shadowing in a masterpiece. If your canvas was all white, it would be really boring. Who wants to look at a polar bear in a snowstorm? That's kind of, that's kind of dull. So anyway, that's, that's my motivational quote for this week. I thought that was really beautiful. Um, so if you're joining us for Oily Fireside Chats and you're not sure where to get these oils, by all means, contact Anne or Janelle or myself. We would love to get you hooked up. If you have questions on anything we're talking about, like you're, okay, they keep talking about ER, essential rewards, free oils. How do I get free oils? Uh, please do message us. We don't want to see you stumbling around in the dark trying to figure this out yourselves. That's what we're here for. We're here to teach. Um, we love having you join us every week. We love answering your questions. And we're really thankful you all tuned in this week. So have a beautiful week. And we will see you here same time, same place next Tuesday. Bye. Bye.